Hi guys, Tango Oscar Mike. I get a lot of questions about my antenna, so I thought I'd do a little video on it. This is a Soda Beams wire winder, and this is Soda Beams wire. DX Engineering has a new wire they call their Stealth Antenna Wire, which I think is pretty much the same thing. This wire is actually, from Soda Beams, is actually very good. It's very strong um, for pulling on it, but as you can see here, my little connector, after being soldered in here for so long and bending back and forth, it does break. And this is actually the second time it's broken on me. Um, so I'm thinking a binding post might be better right there. I have strain relief, so there's really not a lot of strain on it. But just from being pulled and wound up a lot, uh, bending it back and forth, this wire actually did break on me. But it's never broken anywhere else. I've never had any other issues. So... You know, strip a little off and fix it, but I think a binding post might work better there. So this is the box. This box I got from Polycase. It's a company in Ohio. They make all kinds of little plastic boxes. I, I like this box. It was only $2.88. That's the cost of the box. They do charge a lot for shipping. So unless you're buying a bunch of boxes, it's not going to be worth it. So use use whatever you have to put this stuff in. You can see there's plenty of room inside here for more stuff. Uh, if to actually, I could use a much smaller case and even smaller than this because I don't think I would put the ground lug on here again. Uh, the reason being is uh, it's ground for counterpoise, whatever. Um, I've tried this and it has made no difference in the SWR or the performance of the antenna that I can tell. So, let's go over some of the other stuff for this antenna. The, com the main components I got from Mauser Electronics. The BNC bulkhead connector is $4.04. .04. The 100 uh, picofarad capacitor is $0.43. Cents, and the ferrite core is $0.63. Cents. Now, the, there is a little bit of shipping there, but Mauser shipping is actually very good. The enameled wire which is magnet wire i got off of ebay i got a spool of it off of ebay for seven dollars and 35 cents so for less than 15 dollars you have the components of this antenna not including the wire but um so it's a three primary turns 21 secondary turns if you need help figuring out how to do that there's pl lots of videos on um youtube there's presentations and stuff you can look at that will show you how to do that. Now I have just a dab of hot glue holding this, uh, the ferrite core in place. It's never melted, so I guess I'm not over using the antenna. So the antenna is, should be good for 20 watts single sideband, 12.5 watts CW, and 5 watts digital. And that's due to the, the duty, duty cycle of that, of whatever particular mode you're using. Now, I didn't come up with this antenna design. I got this from a presentation posted online by Kilo One Romeo Foxtrot. The gentleman's name is Steve Dick. Um, he has a whole presentation on NFED antennas. It's very good. But on page... Uh, that's actually slide 25 of his presentation. There's a spreadsheet of the different components that make different antennas. And this antenna is at the top of that list. Um, there's also high power versions that he has listed there too. And the components, the primary turns, the secondary turns, and the efficiency. This antenna is supposed to be 90.1 to 93% efficient. And it's worked great for me. I've used it as a vertical, as you see in my videos. I've also used this as an inverted V and also an inverted L. My home antenna is actually a, another NFED antenna. It's a 49 to 1, which this is based off as well. And it's in an inverted L. I've run it as a flat top as well, but I seem to get a little bit better propagation as an inverted L. Um, but that's, that's all I have for this antenna. Um, I recommend making it for 10 through 40 meters and then making it so you can add the other section on it for 80 meters if you need it. If you make it for 80 meters, then you're dealing with 130 some feet of wire every time you uncoil it and, it, and it's just a pain. 
But in the field, a 64 foot antenna is much easier to deal with. This antenna does not need a tuner. If you tune it properly, it'll be resonant on all the bands uh, 10 through 40. A tuner can't help, but if you do it right, it'll be, your SWR will be good enough that you really don't need a tuner. My home antenna is that way. My home antenna I use without a tuner on 10 through 80 meters, and it works fantastic. Uh, no complaints. Well, I hope you found this useful. I'll put the information, uh, the part numbers, and all the links for all the components in the description of the video. So look there if you want to build your own. This is Tango Oscar Mike, 73. Take care. Tango Oscar Mike.